suppose conductive use of metal or conductors depends on what depends on number one this two is very very important factor so i said that conductivity of a metal depends on the temperature and number of the valence electrons but this chapter doesn't deal about the metal it deals with the electrolytic solution electrolytic so this chapter is name is electrochemistry so we need to this is the basic thing which i wanted to tell you all of you but this part is not that much important for this particular chapter what is important we need to know conductivity of an electrolytic solution what are the characteristics which depends which actually governs the conductivity of a metal means for the conductivity of an electrolytic solution so what you can think of there also there are two three factors more which can actually conductivity depends on the so number one if an electrolytic solution first point is the temperature if temperature increases conductivity is also increased why i will tell you the reason i will tell you first let me write number 2 If you don't understand, please feel free to tell me. I can repeat it. Okay, no problem, no doubt. So these are the main important points which is actually conductivity of electrolytic solution depends. These are the main important points. Temperature. If you increase the temperature, the num movement of the ions will be increasing. Movement of the ions will increase. That means there is an ion will go here and there. Movement of the ions will increase. That means conductivity will increase. because on the how the conductivity depends movement of the ions. Right. Similarly, if you increase the temperature, it will it will produce a much more energy, kinetic energy. It will give the kinetic energy to the ions. Ions will move far fast. If ion is moving fast, that means conductivity will increase. First point. Second point is nature of the electrolyte. What type of electrolyte you are using? It can be it can be just a flow. It can be association. It can has to happen dissociation. It can happen association. Depending on the nature of the electrolyte. Also, size of the ions will be. How much bigger size ion size is going? If the ion size is bigger, movement will be slower. Movement will be slower. If ion size is small, movement will be faster. So, depending on the ion produced, and also in the their solvation means suppose you are putting in the water condition, in the aqueous condition, how the water molecules is surrounding a particular ion. That also depends on their solvent. Not only any solvent. I am discussing only for water solvent. Solvent. Also, nature of the solvent. How? What is the nature of the solvent? If it is highly viscous, what can happen? If it is lower viscous, lower less viscous, what can happen? So these all factors govern the conductivity of an electrolytic solution. Clear? Clear? You note, noted all those points. Any doubt from anyone can ask me. Uh, that is better to ask right now <clears throat> because if I read it again, you can ask me no problem. But if you have any doubt to understand any point, I can repeat again. So can you repeat the nature of uh, solvent and its viscosity again, sir? Huh? 
हाँ ये ऑब्वियस तो दिस इज सपोज इट इज हाईली विस्कस सॉल्वेंट हाईली विस्कस सॉल्वेंट मूवमेंट ऑफ द आयन विल बी लेस कॉन्डक्टिविटी विल बी लेस बिकॉज विस्कस इट इज नॉट फ्लो इट कैन नॉट फ्लो फास्ट इफ इट इज विस्कस दैट मीन्स आयन मूवमेंट विल बी डिक्रीज आयन मूवमेंट विल बी डिक्रीज मीन्स कॉन्डक्टिविटी विल बी लोअर दैट इज क्लियर is it clear now to you yes sir thank you sir <clears throat> so these are the main important points for an electrolytic solution okay now you should understand one thing generally it was earlier generally it was difficult because in a solution so if you want to check the conductivity what you do use in the physics which strong bridge are there So what is that? Like an unknown current and all those things. That part I'm not going to discuss. That might be there at your book, but that is not important here. But generally they use generally people use platinum electrode. So in the platinum electrode, what they do? I'll tell you. Uh, so they suppose this is the chamber. They put. They are connected with the bed. I am not drawing in a proper way, just to make you understand. Because this part is just for understanding. No need to uh, be because question will not come from here. But the, this is part you should know how they have done. So generally they put the platinum electrode in between. They keep the solution. So whatever the conductivity is coming because of the solution electrode, they are measuring with the bed. What is the in the solution? The solution is you know area of cross section. What is the conductance? D is nothing but Kappa into A by L. So if you know kappa means kappa is a conductivity. If you want to measure conductivity, you need to know A and L. So these are the value. That's what also particular cell. Particular cell you need to know the cell constant. Digital value. That's what I told you. Generally, what they do digital value? How they calculate the cell constant? They actually take the for a particular solution for a KCL solution. Suppose. they take the kcl solution and this kcl solution they know the particular conductance so for them they calculate what is the value of the cell constant so for that cell constant that particular value they use for the other substance this is the basic thing which you can read from the book also you can understand but what part is actually coming important that you might not understand by seeing the book that i will tell you the unit conversion and all those part is very very critical here so generally remember this here molar conductivity unit did i tell you molar conductivity no right so what is molar conductivity molar conductivity is nothing but if you follow your ncert book you follow this otherwise in some book they change the uh, unit and all not unit this how they write that this, this is lambda a this is nothing but called the molar conductivity you can follow any book but this is way of representation generally some book they provide this is small lambda this is big lambda capital small but you want if i you can doing it you can do it also like this so molar conductivity is nothing but kappa divided by What is kappa? Kappa is nothing but the conductivity divided. This is since it is molar. Molar means it has to divided by the concentration. Understood? So this is the formula for molar conductivity. Kappa divided by C. Kappa divided by C. Now unit is very clear. What is the unit of kappa? Tell me. You check. Yesterday only I did. Kappa is Siemens meter inverse. Now. Unit Siemens meter in Siemens meter inverse, right? What is the concentration? Concentration will be listen. If you are putting listen everyone, if you are putting kappa in Siemens meter inverse, then put the concentration is mole per liter. No, don't mole per liter. Mole per meter cube. Mole per meter cube. This is mole per. Meter 
Okay, note it down. Whatever I'm writing, just note it down. You can check from the book, no problem. But if you don't understand from the book, that's what I'm telling you. Cement meter inverse divided by mole per concentration, mole per mole per liter. We know, but generally molarity, molarity what? Mole per liter. What is molarity? Molarity number of moles divided by the volume of the solvent in the volume of the solution is liter. Right? That is mole per liter molarity. Liter means nothing but meter cube. And putting liter in meter cube. So with respect to this. This is the unit for the molar conductivity. Okay. So what is the molar? Yeah, simple way conductivity of a one molar solution. That is nothing but the molar conductivity. Is a very simple way. So this is Siemens meter square mole in. But when you are putting concentration in the mole, concentration in uh, gram per, suppose you are putting gram per, gram per liter. Is that also? You can put it. Then remember this. Actually, if you check the book, they have complicated this thing. I'm going to show you in a very simple way. So just this way. Achha. Mole per mole per liter. So I'm putting mole per liter. Suppose. What is one liter? One liter means thousand centimeter cube. You know this. What will come? It will come. Right? Clear? So, when they provide, listen to me, in the book they have complicated all those things. I'm not telling that one Siemens meter square mole inverse means Thousand centimeter square? No, I'm not telling that. I'm not telling that. There is a, it will be coming 10 to the power 4 actually, but I'm not telling that. I just wanted to tell you, if you check your book also, you can check. One Siemens meter square mole inverse is 10 to the power 4 Siemens centimeter square mole inverse. But no. But since here, I just wanted to tell you, just put the liter in thousand centimeter cube. So unit will be thousand into Siemens more centimeter square mole inverse. Now, if I, if I do a small numerical, that's only one part of the numerical, then the problem will be very easy for you. Just if you just, what you do, when they wanted to know the molar conductivity in, with respect to your Siemens centimeter square mole inverse, what you do, put the concentration in mole per liter, multiply with thousand. Put the, so this is put the, what you do, put the K value in Siemens centimeter inverse. Put the concentration in mole per liter, mole per liter, whatever the concentration, multiply here in thousand. So it will become putting K in cement centimeter inverse, concentration in mole per liter into thousand, answer will be coming always centimeter cement centimeter square. If I tell you one problem, both they have complicated, they have put so many things. I wanted you to make it very simple. What do you do when they are providing in meter inverse? Okay, that is a different story. If they wanted to know in centimeter, cement centimeter square mole inverse of the molar conductivity, just do one thing. Whatever the copper value put in centimeter cement centimeter inverse, concentration is mole per liter. Multiply with 1000, you will be getting total value will be coming in semen centimeter square mole. No need to check any value. Clear? Yeah. This you note it down.
if i tell you in the math in the from the book only i'll tell you the math they have put so many unit but i will do in a very simple way i just put it thousand divided by zero it will come exactly the value whatever you are expecting just part of one math i'll tell you here numerical is very very important okay numerical is very very important this chapter and understanding also very very important if you don't understand it will be very very difficult for each one of you okay clear uh, provided this is acha you note it down this will be in given centimeter in part and this will be in mole part then the overall will be coming this part given centimeter square mole in part Yeah, right. So one numerical. Acha. If I just for part of one numerical, this is not a book only. I'm telling you. Just part of it. K kappa means conductivity of zero point zero two molar solution of KCN. They have this is on one line map. KCN they have provided this one. This is part of the map which I actually copied from the book to make you understand because this is a zero point zero two four into ten to the minus two Siemens centimeter inverse. Calculate the pi m means molar conduct means lambda m that means molar conductivity of the same KCN solution. So what do you do? You know the formula. Molar means mole per liter. I told you concentration. You put mole per liter. What is the value? It is coming. It will come. Whatever calculate the value, it will come. So if I simplify this, minus two plus three only ten. So if you calculate this, it will come as ten. Understood. Clear? Yeah. Molar conductivity in of KCL solution. So K K kappa they have provided concentration we know zero point zero two molar. Molar means mole per liter. That is, I put zero point zero. Nothing I did. Whatever the value will be coming exactly. Whatever the answer you want. Don't forget this. Okay. This is a way trick. This is the thing. This is if you just multiply a thousand, you'll be getting it. Otherwise, it will be complicated. What is the conversion of this and that? Difficult. <clears throat> Now, very interesting part of this chapter is coming. 
the relation between the molar conductivity with this what is the molar conductivity with respect to the weak electrolyte and the strong electrolyte okay that i'm going to tell you right now So this is the graph of molar conductivity with respect to the root over of concentration. Okay, so if concentration is increasing, listen, this is y, this is x, right? This is for the graph for the weak electrolyte. For example, acetic acid is a weak electrolyte. You know, ACOH is nothing but acetic acid. Okay, this is a strong electrolyte. For example, KCl, NaCl. KCl is a very strong electrolyte. You know this. K plus and Cl minus. Now, you have to understand this, this graph very nicely. In the book, they have proved, they have written, but not in a very nice way. It's, it's not very easy to understand if you read. So generally, this is molar conductivity. This is the concentration. So what is happening? Left to right, the concentration is increasing. See, from here to here, right to left, dilution is increasing. So this side, dilution. See here, concentration is on the right side means obviously dilution will be in the opposite side. Right. Now, first I'll very easily, which is for the weak electrolyte, I'll tell you. Then I'll discuss about the strong electrolyte. For the weak electrolyte like acetic acid, what is actually happening? So, for the weak electrolyte, generally, <clears throat> here, if generally when the, the concentration is increasing, then what will happen? Then, uh, suppose I mean, I'm talking about suppose dilution is increasing. If dilution is increasing for a weak electrolyte, the number of ions will be increased. Right on. Means, if you are increasing the dilution, movement of the ions will be more. It is not in concentrated part. If dilution is increasing, if that is number of ions con conductivity will obviously will increase. See? If the concentration part is not decreasing, because movement of the ions will compact or weak it, right? Is that clear? What about for the strong electrolyte? I asked that the Bali, uh, he was, he, so the answer is actually, I'm telling you, listen, for a strong electrolyte, this expression is not there. At lower concentration also, the number of ions will be the same. At higher concentration also, number of ions will be the same, almost same. That means dilution doesn't affect the conductivity for the strong electrolyte in general. So why I am saying this kind of graph? There must be something else, right? You need to know for the strong electrolyte, it has been, it's a theory, this is a theory, okay? It can be, it, you can think of 
that positive ion is surrounded by a negative at negative ion and vice versa negative ion is surrounded by the positive ion now this is called the central ion this is called the ionic atmosphere it's not there in your book okay just listen to me carefully or note it down this is the central ion this is the ionic atmosphere when the concentration is increasing then they are compact that means the movement of the central ion because of the interaction with the ionic atmosphere is actually more that means with increasing the concentration as you can see the conductivity of strong electrolyte will be less because of the central ion movement is very very less while increasing the dilution from this side to this side this actually the interaction between so that means if dilution is increasing that means the central ion is not much surrounded by the ionic atmosphere interaction will be less if the interaction will be less with the central ion with the ionic atmosphere the movement of the central ion will be more and at a particular dilution means that when the dilution is exactly in transverse to infinity then this conductivity of this central ion will reaching as a limiting value this is called the molar conductivity at infinite dilution in some book they are provided with respect to the equivalent conductance equivalent conductance molar conductance is different that i can tell you later on equivalent conductance when the concentration is in gram equivalent there is a difference between the equivalent conductance with the molar conductance that i can tell you in some book same card they have provided with respect to the equivalent conductance and concentration if in the exam they provide equivalent conductance suppose they have i by chance they have read don't forget this is the same card there is a factor that factor we can discuss later that's one factor is there but card will be exactly the same like if you provide molar conductance clear understood this point this is called molar conductivity at infinite dilution note it down so if this this or this note it down any doubt from anyone this to understand repeat again it's better now you tell later on you will not find in the book this for explanation okay valid now you understood that they asked you yes sir okay this is the explanation okay exact explanation okay this is the case now this has a this curve is actually this is for the strong electrolyte this is for the strong electrolyte molar conductivity is equal to molar con this is the in so what is nothing but p y is equal to p plus n nothing but this is the for uh, this is the straight line this is the straight line you know this so y is i m i so lambda lambda molar conductivity c is the intercept which is this okay and slope is negative that is minus a you can see the slope is negative m is the slope c is the intercept this is for the strong electrolyte note it down okay generally it has been observed that for the weak electrolyte the value of acha that it can wipe this okay then i can tell you one thing
This is for the strong electrolyte, okay? This is for the weak electrolyte. Alpha. Alpha, I'll tell you what is alpha. Suppose So suppose an acid, okay, the weak electrolyte, suppose acetic acid, it is in the water, it will be dissociating, giving H plus acid. Generally, you can write H2O plus also you can write, and if I am not considering H2O plus, why I am writing only H plus, that is also no problem, you can provide like this, H plus and A minus, okay. So what is the K? K is nothing but the equilibrium constant. Concentration of H into concentration of A minus divided by the concentration of H. What is why water is not there? Water we are considering as unity. Concentration of water it doesn't change. That's what we are putting. This is nothing we are putting. So generally remember this. If initially it was one, this is zero, zero at the initial time. Then degree of dissociation happened. So one minus alpha. Alpha, alpha amount of this alpha is nothing but the degree of dissociation. Okay. Then if concentration of C, we can think of C into 1 minus alpha, C alpha into C alpha. Now put the value there. C alpha square 1 minus alpha. Generally, for a weak electrolyte, the degree of dissociation is actually very, very less. For that reason, sometimes 1 minus alpha is nothing but is equal to 1. Assumption, mathematical assumption we always say. Sometimes, so it is if 1 minus alpha near. Here. 1 minus alpha, I'm thinking this is degree of dissociation is very, very less for weak electrolyte. Then 1 minus alpha, we can think of nearly equal to 1. So this is becoming C alpha. Clear? Understood this? So if you put, want to put the value, you put the this value of the, this is molar conductivity divided by the molar conductivity at the infinite dilution. This will be if you put the value also, and we can do otherwise. If you don't think that okay, I will not put 1 minus alpha is equal to 1, so you can put alpha values also here. Means you can put this one also here. That also you can derive. Clear? Understood this? So weak electrolyte and strong electrolyte is the. This is case for the weak electrolyte and the strong electrolyte. Now it will come if there is a. Uh, we have time, uh, we have little bit of time. That I'll tell you what is the cold rush, cold rush law of independent migration of ion. That is also very, very important. It has been observed that This is the cold rush law independent migration of ions. 
what is it? So it has been observed that there is a reason. Suppose the difference between the molar conductivity value or conductance value between these two pair, KCL K and another also there, it doesn't depend on the so suppose KCL and NACL you are comparing the molar conductivity value. Similarly, KBR and NABR, you are conducting a change by checking the molar conductivity value. Suppose this came X, this came Y. The difference between the molar conductivity value between KCL and NACL came X. This is the difference between KBR and NABR came Y. So it has been observed that X is equal to Y. Clear? It has been observed that X is equal to Y. That means that whatever the nature of the anion, it doesn't depend. It only depends on the cation. Right? So then it has been it has been thought of that no, if that is the case, then molar conductivity is nothing but the sum of the ion conductance of both the cation and at infinite dilution. Okay, so molar conductivity at infinite dilution is nothing, this is the cold rush law of independent migration of ions. It's nothing but the ion conductances of both the cations and anions at their infinite dilution. So generally, For example, if I tell you, okay, these are the conductivity, molar conductivity of an ion on the individual cation and individual ion at the infinite direction. Okay, this is the sum, so this is the, this is the, otherwise in some book, they are provided with respect to the equivalent conductance. Equivalent conductance of the uh, equivalent conductance at infinite dilution is nothing but the sum of the ion conductance of both the cations and anions. This is the cold loss. The same, all are same. Nothing is a problem. Generally, for this, that means this is what is the one charge? This is one. That means it is becoming. If you provide for So whatever the whatever is coming here, that is coming here. It is two Cl minus it is two. See, this is the formula. 